So as you can see here, groups number five and six are down about 0.4 of a volt from the rest of the battery pack, which has been a problem uh, for this e-bike battery for quite a while. And in this picture, you can see the battery removed from the bike and the first layer taken off. And the rest of this video is about how I repaired the e-bike battery by replacing uh, these bad groups with some new cells. Okay, so I've identified the cells that are low. So these ones are around 3.5 volts. And these ones here are around 3.9. So it's a significant drop. It's been going on for a long time. So I've decided to replace these two parallel groups. I'm going to try and cut and pry along here, sticking to the cuts on the negative side of the cells. That way, if I do spike through this pink uh, wrap, it shouldn't be a problem too much, as opposed to cutting through here and shorting out on here would be a much bigger problem. Okay, so I've been able to manage to cut these um, copper bars that I had in here just using a pair of these sort of fairly heavy duty wire cutters slash mini bolt cutters. I'm just about ready to do the cut and I just wanted to prop up the nickel strip just a little bit just to give me a little air gap so the blade doesn't uh, go down into the battery. So I'm just using these little toothpick, plastic toothpick things. So one, they're plastic, which is good. And two, they're um, basically fit for purpose to uh, pop under the nickel strip just to give them that little gap. And if anything was to drastically go wrong, it might provide a little bit of protection uh, against a wayward blade. So this is the tool I'm using, this Ryobi, uh, basically what do you call these things? I forget what you call them. Uh, basically like a die grinder, mini, little mini saw, mini, uh, mini tool. So we'll give that a spin and we'll see how we go. Yep, so that's working really well. So I was able to do one side, no worries. Going really well, doesn't take long at all. It's very thin. So once you've done a couple, you can get reasonably quick at it. Might be a couple of tricky ones on here. So I'll just uh, record doing a couple more. Yeah, a little tear in it and it breaks away quite easily anyway. There we go. So I've actually cut through all of these uh, strips. And I've just given a little twist and the, um, the glue is broken free. Um, this hot glue is just basically crappy craft glue. Um, I'm just going to try and prise it out a bit. It's just stuck on in a few places. Yeah, I can see where it's stuck. And it's got it. 
careful I don't puncture the sides there. And I've still got a BMS wire on over here. So I'll just carefully pull it out this way, I think. So there we go, basically got the defective module out. That actually went pretty well, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll make up another one of these um, with some spare, spells, spare cells I've got and slot it straight back in. Um, and I might break down this further later on to try and find uh, if it's a defective cell or something else going on with that and reuse this for a power bank or something. So I'm just charging up the individual cells to about 3.90 volts to match the rest of the pack. And here's the new groups coming together. And for this module, I just lay it on the nickel strip. This is actually a different nickel strip than what I was originally using. So it's a bit thicker and able to handle a bit more current. And here it is all wrapped up in new shrink wrap, ready to go back in the bike. So I finished the battery and put it back into the bike and I've just got it charged up. So looking on the screen here, a little bit hard to see. Let's get that in focus. You can see here we're 0 0.027 of a volt out. Um, so that's going to, well, actually creeping up a little bit. Around 0.3 a volt um, difference. Um, so we're charging up to 4.19 on this um, on this charge. So let it go, and we'll let it sit on the charge for a while to balance out. And hopefully, finally, we can get all these cells all nice and even. But I'm pretty happy with 0.02 already. So if we can get that down to 0.01, I'll be pretty happy. Um, so probably be about another half an hour or so before it reaches 4.19. So we'll keep an eye on that. And the good thing about the adaptos is that you can use a server power supply and charge coil to charge it up. So I'm just charging it up again for the second time. It kind of reached full charge and wasn't balanced. It was about 0.05 of a volt difference, which was too much. So I took it out for a quick blast and hammered it around and adjusted the balancing down to 4.12 so it's starting to balance now and you can see the difference there is 0.024 volt which is kind of within range for it to start balancing by itself um, without having to get out the extra manual balancing uh, doodads so I've got the charge rate down really low, so you can see there it's about 4 amp coming in and it thinks about 12 minutes before it hits full. So I'm probably going to run into the same problem where I don't have enough headroom to balance it completely until it hits full charge but I think what I'll do at that point is basically just turn off the charger and just let it let it balance and maybe balance overnight and that might might bring the voltages back in line by itself um, but yeah we'll see how we go we'll see how this works so I've just been for about a 15k ride, just for a bit of a cruise, just taking it pretty easy. And there's some stats there, pretty much what I would expect. This is the chart I'm interested in. Um, so it's actually sort of gone inverse. The new cells are in groups 5 and 6. And... They're sort of holding up a little bit better than the rest of the pack, which is quite aged now. 
probably three or four years old, probably, I'm guessing maybe a hundred charges or something like that through it. Um, but 0.026 as a gap is not too bad, so I'll just let this sit for now and probably get the rest of the um, battery all the way down on another ride or two. And we'll see what happens when it charging when it charges up after that. But I imagine from now on, I'm probably going to be balancing the battery a little bit more and keeping a bit of an eye on it. But now that I understand the battery charge and balance cycle a bit more and the intricacies in that, it should all be okay. So I'm pretty happy with the end result.